Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nicholas Moseski from Culture of Gaming, and I have a very special guest today, Paul Eiding from, you might know, in Ben 10, Metal Gear Solid, Murdered Suspect, so many shows and TV shows and games that it's so, it's so hard to memorize it all the time. How are you doing today, Paul? I'm doing great. But I'll get better. <laughs> All is well. Oh, that is great. Now, let's start off with, like I mentioned before, you have done so many characters. Um, Grandpa Mac, the Colonel from Metal Gear. How do, you, how do you have the time to do all these characters and like voice so many lines of dialogue for whatever, so video games? Uh, well, it, uh, over the, as many years as I've been doing this, um, I've been very lucky. And once, once you get... Once you get the job, you know, the job of, 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 a, of a voice actor or any actor, mm -hmm. the job is getting the job. Yeah. <laughs> Once you've got the job, <laughs> then it's vacation time. And, okay. You know, it's yeah. all fun. Uh, and each each game, each cartoon, uh, depends on, you know, how involved it is, depending on how much time it takes. Yeah. Like something like Ben 10, we would, uh, they would have all of us, the entire cast, uh, recording mm -hmm. at the same time and we'd have a four hour session so in four hours we would record an entire uh, e episode of Ben 10 mm -hmm. with something like Metal Gear Solid because it's such an involved game yeah. and, and we had so much dialogue mm -hmm. that took several sessions I think I was probably recorded nine or ten days uh, four, hour, four hours a day really? on that okay. yeah so it, it all depends on the, the size of the project and, and uh, how involved it is. Okay, okay. You have, you're pretty much known as a veteran voice actor. Could, because I'm actually interested, what was your first official role as a voice actor? Because you've probably done so many characters in who knows how many years that I'm actually interested. What was your very first role? It could be from anything, even a like commercial or something. Wow. Very first voiceover? Very first voiceover. Voiceover. Because they did a lot of commercials, on-camera commercials, when I was living in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. I moved there to do theater. Um, I think the first thing I did was, it was basically, it was a training film. One of the guys who, I, I moved to Minnesota and started doing improv. Mm -hmm. uh, like Second City sort of things. Okay. Saturday Night Live, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And one of the guys who worked there, because... Uh, he had a, another job, uh, a day job, because when we were working there, we only made $100 a week. Oh, okay. We, uh, <laughs> which was next to nothing. Yeah. And his job was a, as a writer for a company called uh, 3M. And he would write training manual, uh, training videos. Yeah, okay. And audios. And I think, now that I think of it, I think that was probably the first straight voiceover job that I did. Oh, okay. Teaching people, you know, this is how you sell scotch tape. So that was your very I first... Think that's, I think that was what it was. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay, people widely known you as the Colonel from Metal Gear Solid. Right. Now, did you work with David very closely when, as he was Solid Snake or Big Boss, whichever the audience prefer? Did you work with him closely or did you both have to be in like separate voice rooms? No, no, the great thing about Metal Gear, and I think one of the reasons why it's iconic and why it sets itself apart from all other games that I've worked on, is that with Metal Gear, we were in the room together. Yes. So I got to work off of, we got to walk, work off of each other, mm -hmm. which as an actor, that's what you want. Okay. Nine times out of ten nowadays, even with animation, you're generally in the room by yourself. And the director will say, okay, give me five different types of readings on that line, and then they'll put it together later yeah. but with Metal Gear it was uh, it was a chance for us to be in the room at the same time okay and it was like doing uh, uh, radio so you're actually working uh, with the other actor which is oh, great that's interesting yeah now I asked David a similar question to this but you both work with Hideo Kojima uh, I'm genius in terms of video games his story delved deeper and deeper in terms of lore, narrative development. Some fans of the series got a little confused as the story went on. Right. And so I'm just curious, were you able to manage um, the grasp of the story as it keep evolving, or did you get confused like many other fans? Uh, the one that <laughs> the one that confused me more than anything else was uh, two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because I didn't know what the heck was going on at all. Um, when we finished recording everything, uh, 
The only time I ever met uh, Kojima-san was during that one. Oh, okay. He wasn't around when I was recording, uh, but he was around for two um, when I was doing that one. And even then, we were speaking through an interpreter, and he didn't say much to me. He would talk through our director, Chris uh, Zimmerman Salter, yeah. and he would basically just give a thumbs up <laughs> that he was happy with what I was doing. Um, but that game confused the heck out of me. Yeah. We recorded everything, all of my stuff, and then when we were done recording, I thought we, I was finished, and then uh, the director came in and had a new sheet of paper with all these different paragraphs and different sayings. Uh, that's where uh, uh, Lale Lulelo yeah, yeah, yeah. is on there, and all the Japanese train station names, and I hear it's amazing when the famous purple stuff in the <laughs> flat jaw space with a tuning fork does a raw blink on Harry Carey Rock. I need scissors. 61. When that was there. And there's also the, the bit where he talks about driving home last Thursday and saw an orange light in the sky and all that stuff. And I, I asked Chris, I said, okay, Chris, none of this is connected. What does it mean? And she said, don't worry about it. It'll come clear later. Only two games later, but okay. <laughs> Well, I don't know if it really has come clear for yeah, me. Technically, yeah, technically, it really hasn't. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, was a, it was, except that he was glitching and it was a yeah, the AI simulation. and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah, simulation. That's the moment I got confused as well, because I played it, I played it when I was like 13, 14. Oh. And when I first saw that scene, I had no idea what was going on. It was, it was giving all this philosophy about free, um, free service, um, news everywhere. I was just... My mind was blown, says here. But, but if you, in today's world, yeah. you see how far ahead Kojima was. He predicted it so well that Absolutely. He, it, it's honestly amazing. Absolutely. Now, did, did uh, when the colonel tells you that you've been playing too long, you've been yeah. sitting through, did you turn off your console? I, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I, was so, I was so nervous because this is my first time a video game has like break the fourth wall. So I was like, right. do I... Do I actually turn this off? Because I remember something similar happening in Zelda, but Zelda's a kid's game. Right. But in Metal Gear, it feels like maybe I should actually turn it off. And I did. <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many stories I've heard of someone being 12, 13 years old, sitting in the room at 2 o'clock in the morning, having played for several hours, all the lights off except for the screen, and my voice telling them to turn it off, you've been sitting there long enough, and turning it off and not saving and freaking out. It's, it's an amazing game in that what it's about is it's an anti, I always saw it as anti-war sort of mm. game, but we, at the same time we have so many guys who play the game who said that they've joined the military because yeah, of playing well. the game. Yeah. And I, I don't know how to feel about that. Do yeah, you know I mean? yeah, I get you. And there's also, um, I don't know if you noticed, there's a moment in Metal Gear Solid V that if everyone come, everyone comes together and destroys the nukes, there's like a world peace moment cutscene. Right. So people uh, recognize that as like a anti-war, not propaganda, but like right. awareness and all that. So like, it's amazing how the series like managed just to be a video game, but also bring in all the ide ideologies and meaning in our real world. Right. Yeah. It's an amazing piece. Well, the man is a genius. Yeah, he is a genius. Simple as that. All right. Thank you so much for having us today. A pleasure. A pleasure, my friend. Thank you.